Trash, Part 3, Chapter 7. Gabriel Alondris smiled at me. This is Olivia again. I will tell you a little more, he said. It will make sense. In time, and then this boy will tell us what he wants. I said, how can a man steal thirty million dollars? How? Yes. It is done so often. It is done so easily. Not in a suitcase. It is not like robbing a bank. In the government's case, it is usually done through bogus contracts. Everybody siphons a little bit here, a little bit there. It is done through clever accounting and paying off the people who should be watching. In the case of Mr. Zapanta, I know many men were involved, and some probably thought they were doing our country a service. It took me the best part of two years, but I assembled the paperwork. Like you, Miss Olivia, for some time I worked unsalaried, because this was volunteer work I deemed to be of very great importance. We got copies of false contracts and the bank transfers to invented accounts. We got copies of transactions, always cash withdrawals, because this man always loved to handle cash. Huge sums in dollars. Dollars were the currency, never our own. And where were they going? Olivia, forgive me. I have told this tale so often it no longer has any freshness. What happened? I said. He was stockpiling dollars in a vault in his home. But you, you couldn't prove it? I had so much evidence. Unfortunately for me, I was naive. My office was raided. The same night, there was a terrible fire at my house. I was away. Both my maid and my driver were killed in it. And every scrap of evidence went up in smoke. Then, Olivia, this was the clever part. He had been planning my downfall, and charges were ready to be laid out, laid against me for financial malpractice. It was suggested that I had defrauded the government of half a million dollars, and it was proved that I had organized the murder of a well-known banker, Miss Olivia, to learn about the crimes I had committed while sleeping. At first, I thought it was all so crazy and also obvious that I need not to be afraid. I had lawyers who were relaxed also and sure of success. But the lawyers, I realized this way too late, had been bought, and they fed all my defense straight back to Mr. Zapanta. It is enough to make you laugh, almost. The senator was smart. I was stupid. In this country, you pay for being stupid just as you pay for being poor. After a few months, just as the case was going well and I was certain to win it, I was arrested. Like I said, I was convicted. He paused. I have been in jail ever since. Gardo stood up and pressed a cloth to the old man's forehead. I saw the old man hold Gardo's hand again. Please, sir, said Gardo suddenly. Who is Dante Jerome? The old man looked at Gardo and then at me. I think this boy has many questions, he said. He has come to ask me questions and I will answer them. Dante Jerome was my son. What is the harvest, said Gardo. Also, sir, there are some words. It is accomplished. What does this mean? The old man said, what is accomplished? What do you mean? He was speaking quietly. It is accomplished, said Gardo. Go to the house now, and your soul would sing. The old man worked his lips and stared. I need you to tell me what is accomplished, he said. You have to explain yourself, I think. I don't know, said Gardo. I don't know what it means, but I am told that if you could visit Senator Zapanta's house right now, your soul would sing because it is accomplished. The old man opened his mouth, but he said nothing. He looked at me and then at Gardo. His eyes had become luminous again, and he was leaning forward in his chair. He took hold of Gardo's wrist and said, very softly, Who are you, boy? Please stop playing games now. You know things are very important. I am from Bahala, dump site. Yes, a street boy, I knew it. He held Gardo tight. And that is one of the darkest streets, I think. I worked for many years with street children, my son also. He will think I am being cruel, Olivia, but under these new clothes I can smell the street. It never, ever goes away. Why are you here, boy? Please tell me. Gardo said, Because I have found a letter from Mr. Jose Angelico, sir. We found it in a station locker. It is a letter that the police are looking for, and it is addressed to you. And it says that you must rejoice because it is accomplished. Give me the letter. I did not dare to bring it, sir. Why not? For fear it would be taken, sir. Jose writes to me each year. Why would you have a letter he wrote to me? We think he wrote it just before the police took him. We found it, and... Why did the police take him? Where is he? The police killed him, sir. He was killed when they were questioning him. 
Gardo spoke softly, but the last word still fell like a blow. I saw the old man wince again and buckle, and Gardo stood back from him. He talked softly to the old man in his own language, and the man seemed to take yet more blows. I watched his old hands clench into fists. When the gentleman looked up, his face was wet, and all I could see was pain. We watched the old man shake. Something deep inside him was shaking, and there was nothing we could do but watch.'